Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be doing another episode of checking out one of your guys' solar systems. So today we've got one system from the user Nick118 um, in Discord, so massive thank you to them for sending them system in. So yeah, they did it on Discord, but yeah, if you would like to send in your systems as well, like I said, either Discord or you can uh, let me know the name of your system in the comments and I can go and find it on the Steam Workshop when you've uploaded it um, on there. So that's the other way of doing it. But yeah, either of those two ways, if, if you want to get a system in, that is um, what you need to do there. But yeah, like I said, one system from the user Nick118 in Discord. And yeah, this is called the NG7864 or 78564 box. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, search this up. So get just Galaxy. Okay, here we go. So this simulation right here, right. Let's see what we've got. So, uh, welcome to the darkest uh, galaxy known to mankind. It was discovered in July the 4th, 2104. Okay. Uh, a galaxy was discovered by Neptunian guy. Uh, I missed him a lot. NG told me... Oh, so, Nika. Okay, so Nick is... Okay. Um, and they found something weird at a distance of 7.5 million... Nillion or million uh, light years away. And um, me discovered... Uh, or I discovered it was uh, the galaxy. But everyone found out the galaxy was so dark, it was dark, hard to see with a normal telescope. So they used a special telescope to detect the galaxy, and they confirmed its discovery. Okay, so this is NG78564. Okay, so is it just a galaxy, or is there a simulation? So, okay. Search. Okay, so I think it is literally just a galaxy. So this quite quite weird. We've never had anyone do um, something like this. But yeah, no, no system. It's literally just a galaxy. So, yeah, orbit's on. Yeah, not picking anything up. There's nothing further out, so that roughly does it. Okay, we're gonna have to do a second simulation for the day then, because yeah, that was that was about a minute long. So yeah, we'll have to uh, hop into another one. Okay, so next up we have got um, a system from uh, Pluto Duto. Um, this is on the workshop actually, so I'll quickly do this in the background and get this ready. So um, it's called the um, Apros system. Okay, so let me just uh, hop on and then I can do it. So right there we go. You can't see what I'm doing. It's not showing up like the Steam menu right now. So I'm just clicking around on stuff um, which you can't see. So just bear with me here. Okay, so I just need to enter that um, in. Alrighty. Okay, there we go. So, okay, where are we? Um, well, okay, so now I click on Workshop. So yeah, if I click the yeah this button here, that's also one way to do it. Um, so here we go. So this system here. Alrighty, so the Afro system. So yeah, Modified, this was... Uh, Fairly recently. Oh, okay, so Pluto Animation is another way, um, or another one of his names. So, yeah, the um, Afros or Hafros system. I hope I'm saying that right. So, here we go. Right. Okay, here we go. Here's a system. Right. This is the Afro system. It's similar, very uh, similar to our own. Okay, the central star. So, let's go all the way down. We'll go through it um, as it, we are here. So, there we go. So, the main star itself, very similar to the stats um, with the sun here. Alrighty. Um, the central star, a G type star. Okay. It's very similar to the sun. All right, first planet out. So uh, make M. A large rocky planet with red coloration. It is also tidy locked. Okay, so that, that's his uh, sort of Mercury-like object, I guess. It's similar, a little bigger, actually a lot bigger in size. Uh, and then uh, relatively temperatures of Mercury. I like the way its appearance looks. That looks really good. Okay, now we've got um, Ruvan. So where we are, we'll have a quick look at the object count as well. So 5,000, all right. So we've got some rings, I'm guessing, here. Okay, so a desert planet with orange sand and a thin atmosphere. It has snow for some reason as well. Okay, so half snow, half desert. Okay, so that's a cold desert object then. It's 91 degrees. That's quite weird then. So how would snow work on here? <laughs> that's really strange. But yeah, there we go. All right, now we have got um, this one. Menorus, the largest rocky planet, is a volcanic world with numerous gold deposits. Hey, it is one moon called Narom. Right, gold deposits. I like that. It's got some city lights on it as well there. Alrighty. So here we go. Here is the moon. Awesome. So now we are hopping out. Okay, Sakuna, the Earth copy. Okay. It has two moons, the larger. Okay, and then the smaller one. So here we go. So this is the Earth sort of replica in this um, solar system. So here we are here. Uh, stats. We'll check the stats. 91 and 93, so very, very good stats on this guy. Very similar stats to Earth. Exactly the same radius there. Similar the temperature. A little more in the mass department, but yeah, there we go. And a lot more ocean as well. Definitely looks like a lot more ocean than the regular old Earth. So there we go. Actually, we'll check on the um, blah, blah, let's go flashlight. There's a little more constants, but yeah, that's definitely more ocean heavy um, than old Earth is. All right. And then um, moons. So here's one of them. So there's that. Uh, and then the larger one is this one, I'm guessing. 
Okay, so next one is called Charon, so a small dwarf planet, nothing special here. So this is this is this guy. So yeah, literally a very, very small little one, yep. And yeah, as he said, not much going on, just a small uh, dwarf planet. Righty. So now we are hopping to this one. Okay, the first of the gas giants. It is a boring brown colour, seven known moons. Okay, notable moons, all right. Labels, let's put that on. Okay, so here's the first moon. So yeah, actually, I, I, I won't, I'll just keep the menu open so we can... Uh, just uh, check for these. Okay, so notable moons. Nesseti, a rust-coloured moon that is based on um, the other planet there. So a rust-coloured moon. Then we have got Hakona, a medium-sized rocky moon, which is this one. So there we go. That's pretty large for a moon as well. Uh, Gavos are another regular-sized moon, particularly based on Ganymede. Okay, so there it is. Similar sort of colour scheme. Yeah, I see the Ganymede sort of looks with the colours. Um... Ronax and moons, twin moons that have been separated Aye, by the gravity. And then they're like separated by cobalt, which is made of cobalt. Okay, so that's this one here. So these two were separated by this guy. That's cool, that. So there we go. So there's cobalt. Awesome. Right, now hopping out. So now we've got uh, Chacon over here. Just Charaka. Okay. Uh, Kovon, a larger gas planet with a thin ring system. Okay, so there's the rings in this. It's like making that object count go up. And then it's got notable moons. So we've got uh, this moon here. So just a few moons, almost like shepherd moons, little small ones near the rings. Uh, we've got Hono here, a small icy moon with blue coloration based on Enceladus. All right, that's cool. Um, then the next one is a large, highly reflective moon. Its clarity is affecting. So this one is this one. So, Iska, I hope I'm saying that right. And then this is affecting the Vikasin over here. So, a large hosphoric moon has been unstable due to the previous moon. All right, that's cool. I like that. So, you can see the, uh, yeah, slightly different orbits there. Right, awesome stuff. Right, now we're taking the jump out. So, next up, we've got Aeconus, a mix of Jupiter uh, size and Uranus's color and tilt. So, a tilted sort of Jupiter-Uranus clone or uh, mix here. That's quite cool, actually. Nice, simple colours on it as well. I like that. Um, yeah, there we are. Two, two, oh, this one also has rings. So, like, Uranus. I like that. That's good. Cool. Um, and notable moons. So, we have got Mulon over here. So, that's very dark, isn't it? Look at that. So, this one, um, darkest object in the system. It's based on Umbriel. Righty. And then Tropan, comparison, and the only other large moon, based on Triton. Okay, that's cool. So, Umbriel and Triton moons um, or replicas. And then we've got some other moons further out, like uh, Uranus and Jupiter would have just non-notable ones, just little asteroid stuff. So there we go. I like that. That's my favourite system so far of like planets. All right, and now we're moving on to the next one. Um, okay, so Bera Latu, a dwarf planet with the most reflective object in the system. Two uh, no moons. Right. Okay, so here we go. So all the way down here, it's a highly reflective object here. I like it. Right, and then moons. So uh, Entia, a red-coloured moon. So it's like, uh, it is coloured in follins. So, okay, yeah, I know what follins are. Pluto has some, some of them as well, which make its reddish, brownish um, areas. Uh, and then we've got Sator over here. So that is the other moon. Alrighty. Good stuff indeed. Right, now, moving on. So Libel, a make-make. Okay, so this is a make-make like object. Or make-make, if you um, want to call it that. Um, okay, so here we go. Alright, so zoom all the way down here. Here we are. So make make or make make, however you want to say it. But yeah, there we go. So that's a lookalike um, replica of that one. It's got one little moon as well over here. So Venat. Right now, we're moving on. So next up, we've got Fidev, the largest dwarf planet. Oh, okay. So that's all the way over here. So we'll have to compare that to some of our uh, planets, actually. So there, here it is. So how large is it? Two thousand. Okay. So I'll compare that to actually Kepler thirty-seven b, which is a small exoplanet. Let's see what it compares up to that. And then there's its uh, moons. But yeah, I want to, oh, let's compare this. So this is the smallest dwarf, or largest dwarf planet. So compared to Mercury, so we can see Mercury still larger as a planet. So we sort of got, is this the boundary between planet and dwarf planet? Um, I also hot Pluto in here. So bigger than Pluto, not as big as Mercury. And then Kepler 37b, you would have seen this in the size comparison to the last few years. So that would be there. So how big is Kepler? So this is... Okay, so this is actually larger than Kepler thirty seven B, and this is an exoplanet. So, I'd I'd have I'd like to raise a debate. Would you class this as a dwarf planet or a planet? Because I mean, size wise, it fits more of the planets 
So Mercury and Kepler than it does with Pluto as a dwarf planet. So I kind of want to argue that would be more of a planet than a dwarf planet. It's got its own moons. It's got a clear orbit. It has got a slightly tilted orbit, but its orbit hasn't isn't cluttered with asteroids and stuff. So, yeah, I'd kind of want to argue that's more of a planet than a dwarf planet. But, yeah, that's a little discussion in the comments. What do you guys think of that? Um, yeah, there we go. So, five the largest dwarf planet, possibly a small planet. Um, not a dwarf planet at all. I don't know. Um, it has an orbit similar to that of Eris. Three no moons. And then, yeah, there they are. So, that's all of those guys out here. So, yeah, just, just little things. Um, but, yeah, there we go. So cool, yeah, I'd, I'd, I kind of want to say that would be a planet of 2,000 in radius. I mean, that's fairly large, so it's not that far off Mercury. And obviously Kepler-37b was actually smaller than that. Alrighty, so now, um, have Vakana, an object that is based on Haumea and Sedna. Alright, so yeah, that pretty far away. Uh, it has two small rings. If it weren't for the limitations of the universe sandbox, I would have squashed into an oval. Okay, it has three known moons. None of them are interesting. So here we go. This kind of reminds me of um, the Charaka, or have you say it, in our solar system, that double-ringed, tiny little thing in between Saturn and Uranus. But yeah, there you go. There's a good look of it. That's cool. I, I like that. And then it's also got um, some um, yeah little minor moons as well. But yeah, there we go. So that does it for this system. And i got to say, I enjoyed that. That was good, that. So the um, APRO system. And yeah, apologies if I butchered any of the pronunciations. But um, yeah, there we go. That's cool. I like that. So let's get a lineup of the whole system here. So overall, did I really like this one? That that I really like this Jupiter Uranus mix. That was cool. Um, onto the Rockies, the Earth one does look really cool. I also like the first planet we saw here, the Macon. I really like the appearance on it. I think it looks great because it's tidy locked. We can see the front of it is actually glowing hot because it's tidy locked. That's cool. Um, yeah, Sakuna. That's cool. Uh, I really like the little one with the rings as well. So I think they're probably my top notable objects. But we'll have a little look further down as well. So here are the rest of them. We also had that other one with a little ring as well. So here we go. But yeah, there we are. Yeah, so there are my top picks for the system, guys. But yeah, um, let me know. Also like the gold one as well. Yeah, this one here. I did like that as well. But yeah, so that is it for the system, guys. So yeah, any thoughts, opinions, discussion on whether you think that dwarf planet should be a planet or not? Yeah. Let's see, let's see what you guys think in the comments. Is it just me who thinks it should maybe be more of a planet than a dwarf planet or not? Let me know down below in the comments. Interested to hear your thoughts on that. But again, a massive thank you to the two guys who sent their systems in. So that was Nick118 for the galaxy thing um, we saw briefly at the beginning. And then Pluto Duto or Pluto Animations um, who sent this one in on the workshop as well. So a massive thank you to him for sending that in. So we've got two, two systems done for today's one, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, that is everything, guys. So let's see if we can go for 30 likes on today's system for these two systems. Um, yeah, any thoughts, opinions, um, stuff, let me know down below in the comments. And also, subscribe if you're new. Helps on the journey to 16,000 subscribers as well, guys, as we are within 100 now. So let's see if we can try and hit that um, before the midway through this month. That would be absolutely awesome. But, yeah, with that all said and done, guys, make sure you have a great day. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.